Hi everyone, welcome to the Ruby Legacy channel. Today I'll be doing my preview and tip for Game 2 of the 2023 State of Origin series. In my preview for Game 1, I tipped New South Wales to win by 112 points. And with 10 minutes to go, it looked like it was going to go that way. But once again, as we've seen many times, especially in the last 15 years, Queensland found a way to win. I said before Game 1 that New South Wales really had to win it as the second game is in Brisbane and they failed to do that. So they now have a huge task to try and rescue the series and as we all know their record in Queensland is not the best. And we'll start with the home side Queensland. For the Queensland side their only changes for Game 2 will be fast ones with back rowers Tom Gilbert and Jai Arrow both ruled out with injury alongside Selwyn Cobbo. You also will see the returns of Fodder Waker and also Jeremiah Nanai. But besides that, it's a largely unchanged squad. And if you're Queensland and if you're winning, why change the squad? Just keep it the way it is. And no doubt they'll be going into this game as favourites for Game 2. And for New South Wales, this team has been talked about a lot in the media and by fans throughout the week. And there's quite a lot of changes. Obviously, the team that loses, they do change up the squad quite a bit some of the changes are through injury like Abbasai Coruscant being ruled out with a broken jaw so Damian Cook goes in there Latrell Mitchell's back in the side and there's been a couple of players dropped as well most notably Nicholas Hines he's been totally left out of the squad and with a lot of the changes Brad Fittler's come under a lot of criticism from New South Wales fans in the media and on social media and the Queensland supporters and the state of Queensland have I've seen a lot of comments say thank you Brad Fittler for picking this side regards Queensland. I think the biggest inclusion of all is Mitchell Mortis being selected at halfback there to replace the injured Nathan Cleary. As soon as Nathan Cleary went down injured I knew that Brad Fittler would pick Mitchell Moses. I said it about a week before the, the team were announced. I've always known that Brad Fittler has been a big fan of Mitchell Moses. He used to coaching when he was the manager of Lebanon and if you listen to some of the commentary when Brad Fittler's on Channel 9 he's always praising uh, Mitchell Moses and I knew that they weren't going to pick Adam Reynolds because New South Wales have this thing where in certain positions if you have a bad series or if you fail they don't seem to pick you anymore I know Mitchell Pierce is the exception but with you look at Adam Reynolds, Brett Kamali and some other players where they haven't had the best series, they never get picked again for New South Wales. And that's been the case for quite a while now for the Blues. You also have a couple of debutants on the bench. You've got Stefano Itakamanu. He's going to get um, a run in Game 2, which is a big um, call for Brad Fittler to make, throwing someone out there that's that young and has never played a, a State of Origin game before, straight into the cauldron of... Uh, Suncorp Stadium and also uh, Reese Robson he gets a call up and um, he's going to be rotating with Damian Cook no doubt and just going back to Damian Cook how would you feel if you were Damian Cook you were completely left out of the squad for game one Fittler chooses Apisai Coruscant and he even names Brayley as the backup so Cook weren't even in the the thought of Brad Fittler's man, and now after all these injuries, Brad Fittler calls Damian Cook and goes, oh, "Are you free now? You want to come and play for us now?" Uh, and especially with the likes of uh, Campbell Graham, how would you feel if you're Campbell Graham? You've been one of the best centers in the competition this year, and uh, you don't get picked. And um, sometimes uh, some of the decisions that New South Wales make are baffling, and I think. Also, Nicholas Hines has been hard done by. He's been one of the best halfbacks in the competition for the last 18 months. And I saw Paddy G talk about it in his video. He said he could tell that Hines was going to be a successor to Cleary if something happened. He was being groomed for that halfback spot. He would have been in camp. And then all of a sudden, game two, Cleary gets injured and he picks his Mitchell Moses. So. Uh, I feel Nicholas Hines were hard done by. Um, he only played 10 minutes in game one and then he didn't have a good game against Melbourne and as a result, he's lost his place in the team. Now, just with some stats coming into this uh, game two, through the past 41 series, the state that has won game one has gone on to win the series a total of 31 times. That gives Queensland a 75% chance 
of retaining the Origin Shield based on history. Queensland hold a record of 23 matches won and 9 lost when hosted in Queensland and have only lost 2 of their last 9 games at Suncorp Stadium since 2015. With New South Wales, when it comes to deciding fixtures, they've only won just 3 out of the last 8 deciders on home soil, that's when they're in Sydney, but this is a totally different uh, circumstance now. Of the last 11 deciders in total, New South Wales have only won 2. And looking at the overall record as it stands, New South Wales have 57 wins in origin, Queensland have 68, series wins Queensland 24, New South Wales 16. Interestingly, game 2 wins in the NRL era, New South Wales have 15, Queensland have 9, but game 2 wins at Suncorp Stadium in the NRL era, Queensland have won 6, New South Wales have won 3, and wins in the siders, Queensland 17, New South Wales 5. And I'll finish with one last stat. The Blues have only once won Game 2 at Suncorp after losing Game 1 of the series. That win came in Game 2 of the 1998 season in a side captained by Laurie Daly and featuring Brad Fittler at lock. In total, the Blues have gone to Suncorp on four occasions needing a win to stay in the series. They suffered defeats in 88, 2010 and 2016 but got home 26 points to 10 in Game 2 of the 1998 series before going on to lose the third and deciding game in Sydney. So, my tip for this game is Queensland will win 13+. plus. Suncorp is a really hard place to go, especially during Origin. The crowd will be about 95% Queensland, and they will really fancy their chances in this match against New South Wales. I think even if Queensland came into this game having lost in Adelaide, then they still probably win this match. If New South Wales are to somehow have a chance in this game, however, then they will need to have a better start than Queensland and get a couple of early tries to silence the crowd and put Queensland on the back foot. If they start like they did in Adelaide, then there's little to no chance of them winning this game. For me, try scorers, who I think is going to score in this match, I think for Queensland you will see Corey Oates, Hamiso, Tabiwai Fado and Jeremiah Nanai scoring. As for New South Wales, I believe that Brian Toto will score another try in State of Origin. And also, I'm going to go for a bit of a, a rough one and I'll go for Tyson Frizzell to get a try up there at Suncorp. So there is me. A prediction and preview for Game 2 of the 2023 State of Origin series. I'm going for Queensland to win 13+, plus and to take the Shield 2 nothing with the final game being in Sydney in a couple of weeks' time. So let me know your tip and prediction in the comment section below. Who's going to win Game 2, Queensland or New South Wales? Type down your thoughts in the section below there. If you like Rugby League History on YouTube, go and check me out on Facebook. Instagram and TikTok, i got links in the description below. But anyways, this has been Rugby League History and I'll catch us all later in the next video. Alright, tatty bye for now.